Hey everyone, I'm AJ Wood and this is episode number four of I Create Content. I appreciate everyone tuning in today. If you caught last Friday's episode, I showed you how to find offline or missing images inside of Lightroom. Today we're going to do a quick Photoshop tutorial. I'm going to put a new spin on an old adjustment, shadows and highlights. Let's go ahead and take a look. All right, you can see on the screen in front of you, I have a photo I took of my daughter yesterday. And this image could benefit from a little bit of a fill light. So first thing I want to point out is if I go to the layer adjustments menu, you'll notice that the filter that I want, shadows and highlights, is not available as a layer adjustment. So I'm going to have to go to the image adjustments menu and here we can see there is shadows and highlights. So I'll go ahead and select this adjustment and I'm actually going to boost it up much more than I actually need. So I'm going to take this right up to about 85-90%. Hey, this is the before, this is the after. That's a really heavy adjustment but you can see the overall effect and I'll go ahead and click OK. Now, what I want to point out here is I've changed and edited the background layer. This is an image adjustment, and as such, it's a permanent change. If I go back and run that same adjustment again, you're going to see first the fader has been reset to its original value of 35% because I'm adding to the previous adjustment. I have no way, because this is a permanent change, to just fine tune. So I intentionally made that too bright to make the point, ooh, I can't actually dial it back. So let me cancel and show you today's tip. I'm going to reset the picture. And here's today's tip. If I take the background layer and right click on it, I can convert that to a smart object. And by converting that layer to a smart object, watch what happens when I go to the image adjustments menu. Some adjustments are available, specifically shadows and highlights. Now I'm going to make a quick note here. You'll see HDR toning, it's in CS5, is also available. It doesn't actually work that way. If you try to run HDR toning, it will flatten the image. So unfortunately, you can't run HDR toning as a smart object but we're here, I can run it for shadows and highlights. Watch what happens. Go ahead and run this, I get the same properties as before. I'm going to go ahead and over exaggerate it, make it way too much. I'll go ahead and click OK. And in this particular case, notice that it's added a smart filter and it's added the shadows highlight adjustment. So here's a quick kind of sneaky way to get around that change, you can treat it as a smart filter. So if I want to edit my settings for shadows and highlights, I simply double click on it. Go ahead and double click, I can back that off. Right. If I want, I can show you more options for the shadow highlight filter. Some quick things of note, the tonal width will adjust the area okay, that's being affected, so I could actually dial this down some. I could also use radius to impact the overall area that's being changed. I also have the ability to add highlight detail, which is not necessary in this image. And I can do some color correction, so I could boost the colors up, all of vibrance. In this case, I'm just going to back them down a little bit. And I also have the ability to add mid-tone contrast. Now, too much contrast is going to give it that faux HDR look, so I'm really going to pull that contrast back. And this actually is very reminiscent of clarity inside of Adobe Camera Raw or Lightroom. So I might put in just a tad bit, a tiny bit of mid-tone contrast, maybe back down the shadows just a tad. Once again, this is our before and this is our after. If I click OK, this is now a smart filter. So if I want, it comes with a mask. I could actually go and paint the background using my brush in black. So I'll select this mask, grab my brush, make sure it's set to black. And if I want to, I can go ahead and darken up the background area. All right. So I think that's a little too much. I'll go ahead and just undo. 
This has been a quick, cool way to use shadow and highlights non-destructively inside of Photoshop. My name's AJ Wood. As always, I appreciate you tuning in every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Please subscribe to this channel, and I'll see you next time.